The Pulsar Fusion Sunbird is poised to revolutionize interplanetary travel with its breakthrough fusion propulsion technology. Developed by UK-based Pulsar Fusion, this next-generation space vehicle utilizes a dual direct fusion drive powered by deuterium and helium-3, enabling theoretical speeds of up to 500,000 miles per hour. This dramatic leap in propulsion could slash the travel time to Mars from nine months to just four, and reach Pluto in under four years reshaping the possibilities of human and robotic exploration. But Sunbird isn't just about speed. Designed as a reusable migratory transfer vehicle, it's capable of generating up to 2 megawatts of electrical power on board. This makes it an ideal platform for in-space manufacturing, asteroid resource extraction, and long-duration deep space missions. With orbital testing anticipated by 2027, the Sunbird marks a bold step toward sustainable, high-speed access to the farthest reaches of our solar system. Blue Origin is taking a bold leap beyond launch vehicles with the introduction of the Blue Ring Pathfinder, a next-generation orbital platform engineered to reshape how we operate in space. Designed as a versatile space logistics hub, Blue Ring functions as an autonomous orbital transport and service system capable of maneuvering payloads between low Earth orbit, geostationary orbit, and even deep space destinations. Equipped with solar electric propulsion and a modular architecture, Blue Ring can support a wide range of mission profiles from commercial satellite deployment to scientific research and national defense. Its ability to remain operational in space for extended durations allows it to perform satellite servicing, repositioning, and infrastructure assembly. With the Blue Ring, Blue Origin is laying the groundwork for sustained in-space operations, signaling a new era where humanity doesn't just visit space, we begin to build and live in it. Cosmos 482 stands as one of the most enigmatic relics of the Cold War space race. By the Soviet Union in 1972, it was intended to follow its counterpart, Venera 8, on a mission to land on Venus. A critical upper stage failure prevented it from escaping Earth's gravity, leaving the spacecraft trapped in a distorted, high-altitude orbit. Rather than vanishing into obscurity, Cosmos 482's story took a bizarre turn from the launch fell to Earth, some of it landing in New Zealand while the hardened descent module, designed to withstand Venus's punishing atmosphere, remains in orbit to this day. Still circling the Earth, this robust capsule could survive re-entry decades from now, potentially making a fiery return. Than just space junk, Cosmos 482 is a time capsule from a bygone era, an unfinished mission silently orbiting, waiting for its final chapter. Rocket Lab is taking bold steps toward rewriting the rules of interplanetary exploration with its streamlined approach to Mars sample return. While traditional plans from NASA and ESA involve a complex, multi-craft campaign with hefty price tags, Rocket Lab envisions a leaner, faster mission. Leveraging its proven electron rocket and photon spacecraft, the company aims to send a compact lander to Mars, scoop up soil and rock samples, and bring them back all within a single mission architecture. This minimalist strategy could slash both cost and timeline, making planetary science more accessible and agile. If successful, Rocket Lab would become the first private firm to retrieve samples from another planet, signaling a paradigm shift in how deep space missions are conducted. It's a major leap toward a future where commercial ventures aren't just supporting exploration they're leading it. O'Neill cylinders represent one of the most ambitious and imaginative visions for life beyond Earth. Proposed by physicist Gerard K. O'Neill in the 1970s, these massive, rotating space habitats were conceived as entire worlds in orbit capable of housing millions in a fully self-sustaining environment. Spanning several kilometers in length and diameter, the cylinders would rotate to simulate Earth-like gravity through centrifugal force, making long-term space living viable and comfortable. Inside, these space-borne megastructures would host thriving ecosystems complete with forests, rivers, towns, and even weather, all maintained by solar power and advanced recycling systems for air, water, and food. 
O'Neill envisioned them not only as a solution to overpopulation on Earth but as a stepping stone to a multiplanetary civilization, built using materials sourced from the Moon and asteroids. Though still theoretical, the O'Neill cylinder continues to inspire space architects, futurists, and sci-fi storytellers as a blueprint for humanity's expansion into the cosmos. Super Nexus is an audacious next-generation rocket concept poised to transform deep space travel through nuclear thermal propulsion. Unlike conventional rockets that burn chemical fuel, Super Nexus uses a nuclear reactor to superheat liquid hydrogen, creating a highly efficient and powerful thrust. This advanced system could slash the time it takes to reach Mars and make crewed missions to the outer planets a real possibility. Engineered to carry heavy cargo and cover vast distances, Super Nexus is designed with long-range exploration in mind from building lunar outposts to launching Mars colonization efforts and reaching far into the solar system. If realized, it would mark a pivotal leap in propulsion technology, merging the raw energy of nuclear power with cutting-edge aerospace innovation. Super Nexus could become the backbone of future interplanetary infrastructure, pushing the boundaries of where and how humans can explore. Imagine reaching space without ever boarding a rocket that's the radical promise of the space elevator. This towering structure would anchor a cable to Earth and stretch it all the way to geostationary orbit, held tight by the planet's rotation. Along this cable, robotic climbers could carry people and cargo into orbit, powered by solar energy, lasers, or electromagnetic systems, slashing launch costs and eliminating the explosive risks of rocket travel. The dream hinges on one major hurdle, material strength. The tether must endure immense tension, and while ultra-strong materials like carbon nanotubes or graphene show promise, we're not yet able to produce them at the necessary scale. If these materials are mastered, a space elevator could transform space access enabling routine orbital travel, sustained lunar operations, and unprecedented missions into deep space. Giant leap waiting for the right breakthrough. EOSEC Space, a pioneering Spanish startup, is reimagining space tourism by taking travelers to the edge of space not by rocket, but by balloon. Their innovative approach uses a massive helium-filled balloon to lift a pressurized luxury capsule to an altitude of about 40 kilometers, 25 miles, offering passengers a serene and emissions-free ascent to the stratosphere. Each six-hour journey includes a smooth two-hour climb, an hour at peak altitude to soak in the sweeping curvature of Earth, and a gentle descent all without the need for astronaut training. Inside, passengers can enjoy panoramic windows, comfortable seating, and a near-space atmosphere in style. As EOSX prepares to begin commercial flights, it's positioning itself as a green and accessible alternative to traditional space tourism, competing with names like Space Perspective and Worldview in the race to open near-space travel to the public. Artemis II marks NASA's bold next step in sending humans back to the moon. Set for launch in April 2026, this historic 10-day mission will fly four astronauts including the first woman and the first Canadian on a lunar flyby aboard the Orion spacecraft. Launched atop the powerful Space Launch System SLS, Artemis II will push beyond low Earth orbit, venturing farther than any crewed mission in over half a century. This mission isn't just a milestone, it's a crucial test of the systems that will support future moon landings. Engineers will evaluate life support, communications, and navigation technologies, building on lessons from Artemis I. With upgrades to Orion's heat shield and enhanced safety protocols, Artemis II is setting the stage for a sustained human presence on the moon and a future leap toward Mars. Axiom Station is poised to become the first privately built space station, marking a transformative shift in how humanity lives and works in orbit. Developed by Axiom Space, the station will begin as a series of modules attached to the International Space Station, with the first launch slated for 2027 and a full crew habitat arriving in 2028. Once the ISS is decommissioned, Axiom Station will detach and continue as a standalone orbital platform. 
Designed to support cutting-edge research, zero-gravity manufacturing, and luxury space tourism, Axiom Station will feature advanced laboratories, panoramic earth-facing windows, and interiors styled by renowned designer Philippe Stark. With its modular approach and multi-purpose design, Axiom is more than just a successor to the ISS, it's the first step toward a commercially driven space economy and a future where private space stations support human activity beyond Earth. The Haven 2 module is shaping up as a next-generation successor to the International Space Station ISS, ready to lead the future of orbital habitats as the ISS approaches retirement. Developed by Vast Space, this privately funded module is engineered for sustainable long-term human occupancy, advanced scientific research, and diverse commercial ventures in low Earth orbit (LEO). Unlike traditional space stations, Haven 2 features expandable living spaces, cutting-edge life support systems, and a modular design that allows it to grow and evolve over time. Its deployment signals a shift toward commercially driven space infrastructure, reducing dependence on government programs like the ISS. As the ISS retires in the early 2030s, Haven, 2 and other commercial stations are set to pioneer a new era of space habitation, supporting research, tourism, and deep space mission preparation while ensuring continuous human presence in orbit. Nuclear-powered rockets represent a transformative advancement in space propulsion, promising significantly greater efficiency and faster travel compared to conventional chemical rockets. There are two main types, nuclear thermal propulsion NTP, and nuclear electric propulsion NEP. In NTP, a nuclear reactor rapidly heats a propellant typically liquid hydrogen, causing it to expand and produce thrust, delivering about twice the efficiency of chemical rockets and potentially cutting Mars travel time by nearly 50%. NEP systems convert nuclear energy into electricity to power ion thrusters, ideal for long-duration deep space missions due to their high efficiency. With agencies like NASA and DARPA leading development efforts, nuclear propulsion technologies aim to enable heavier payloads and dramatically shorten interplanetary journeys, paving the way for humanity's expansion across the solar system.